Golly, I might have broke that handle in my Guys, today we're gonna be escaping probably the largest shrimp tank. The, the, largest, the, the largest shrimp tank. The largest shrimp only tank. In, Maybe that's a good way to put it. In at least Ohio. I don't know. Maybe it the could, world? It could possibly be the world. It might be. Because no, no one's this dumb. <laughs> it might be the biggest one ever. <laughs> it is 400. And 80 gallons. Is that correct, Rob? It is 480 gallons. So, Rob, I mean, just in case people don't know who you are, you I'm, are the man behind Flip Aquatics. Yep, I'm Rob with Flip Aquatics. You can find us on flipaquatics.com or Flip Aquatics on YouTube. You guys know I've been partnered with Flip Aquatics for a long time now. I get shrimp from them, I get aquascaping materials here and there. Um, we're just so, boys, dude. That's what it comes down we're to. Just, <laughs> we're just, we're just some boys we're trying just, to have fun with our hobby. We're here. just, we're just good buddies. And Rob invited me out here to skate this tank, help him skate it. He's gonna be helping out a lot. And it's it's just, just, dude, this is just too much tank for me to handle. It's, no. it's a lot of tank. I need a shrimp only tank. It's dude. a shrimp only tank. It's what the kind of first time anyone's ever attempted something? It's, it might be. It right. might be. At least in Ohio. At least in Ohio. At least in Ohio, <laughs> probably. Um, <laughs> So we've got to start here, kind of. I mean, this scape 480 gallons. I've never escaped a tank this big before. It should be pretty interesting. Uh, it's gonna be a long process of setting up hardscape tonight. That's probably all we're gonna to get to and then we'll plant it tomorrow, but you guys are gonna see it all in this video. So we have already some eucalyptus wood in this tank and something that I haven't used before. Rob got it in special just for this tank and we have quite a bit of it. I'm not sure if we have enough, but we will definitely, we'll make it work. Yeah, we I have, thought we had too much and then now it's we're looking at it and it's like, there's not enough. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a long night. So we started out, we had all the wood in here just as kind of like, just to get an idea of what this thing would look like with that material in it. But now we're gonna take it out, we're gonna go and we're gonna grab the Brightwell substrate that we have. Brightwell was a sponsor for this tank and we're very, very lucky to have them because without them we would have had to spend an incredible amount of money on substrate because as you can tell with the footprint of this tank we would need a ton of it. So we're gonna go start to grab that stuff once we get the wood out and then we'll get a proper start on this tank by giving the plants that will eventually make their home in here a good foundation so that they can grow and hopefully be easy for Rob to maintain. Here we go. So we got the floor and base, which is their laterite clay additive. This goes on the bottom of the substrate. It's a good iron source. It's also a good nutrient sponge as well. And so we're gonna kind of go through the default substrate plan here that they recommend and we're gonna start by putting down some of this. We don't have a ton of it, especially relative to all the substrate that we have. Where was I? So we're gonna be using this. They have a couple different types. Uh, they have a brown variety as well, um, but Rob decided to go with the black, provide a good contrast. We have a lot of that relative to this, so we're just gonna have to use this kind of sparingly. And we have some, um, like a finer version of it as well here, so. That's where we start, and then we leave some bare areas, so maybe we can step in this tank, because I have a feeling we're gonna have to get in it. We got, the, in it. We got the step ladder, but we can only reach so far, so. Oh dude, look, there's a spider, bro. No way. It's like your house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they followed you here. That's a lot smaller. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Dude, you're the, you're the office keeper, bro. You're really good with that paintbrush. Thanks, yeah, you paint, or what do you? Yeah, I used to paint for a living, did you know that? So Rob's painting in the bottom layer substrate right now. Yeah, you're, doing a, you're doing a great job. Man. Mike told me I had to cover the whole thing and I couldn't stop until it was. Yeah, we like we want to. We don't really know what the scape is going to look like. So ideally, you would put this stuff in areas where you know you're going to have like heavy root feeding plants and stuff like that that really need that extra iron. But because we don't know exactly where things are going to go, it's kind of like Mike you just have to spread it out. Mike forgot to draw the plans for it. So. Yeah, I mean the plan's just, every picture was different and my drawing's not that good, so. He sent me stick figures the first time. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I can't follow. <laughs> He's finishing that and now it's time, I think, that I go and I select out some, you okay? <laughs> oh, you were supposed to stay holding the ladder. Oh. Oops, oops. Uh, <laughs> let's pick out some Dragonstone. Uh, we need to use these as like the base 
for a lot of the wood that we have because I want to be propped up a little bit higher. I want to get those pieces of wood up to as close to the top of the tank as possible. So this is going to help with the lift and then we also need to super glue that wood to this rock to help hold it down because it's not waterlogged. So we have some pieces here that we need to go through. We got some large ones and then we have some some medium to smaller size ones that we can kind of play with and put things around. Um, so we got to kind of select out what we want and then we got to get in the tank and, and really start to escape this thing. Dude, I'm an aquascaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Two more bags. I don't know how many bags we're gonna end up with. Probably, I mean, at least 10 at this point. We have, how many bags in do we have so far? Uh, we got four in there so far. Wow, I mean, that that goes pretty far. It does go a long way. That's not bad, 25 pound bags, not bad. But let's take a look at, so this is what I have so far. We did this before I put the substrate in just to see how things would hold what? together. What's we, up? We. we <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I, we we both did this, okay? So we got our really nice eucalyptus roots, eucalyptus wood, whatever we're calling it, and it's super glued down here to these pieces of dragonstone to hold it in place. And so what I'm thinking is that we're just gonna create multiples of these throughout the tank and kind of more or less randomly put them throughout the tank. Um, I'm gonna set them kind of all out and then see how I feel, probably move a few around and then super glue them at the very end and then we'll get to planting, but we gotta do this with 10 more pieces in here, so it's gonna take a while. We gotta pour in some more substrate. Everybody's working hard. Mostly Rob right now, though. He's lifting the heavy bags. The Beautiful. The part's getting into that back middle. Yeah, the back middle's tough. We do have a step ladder, but, you know. That was pretty effective. Look at that. I surprised even myself <laughs> Here we are at kind of the halfway point, I guess, for the hardscape. So let me step back here so you can see the full thing, all eight feet of it. Hard to tell from back there, but we got a lot of the, pretty much all the wood in. I think we have a couple pieces left over as I'm almost sitting on Rob. Here, you gotta get way far back to really see it, but we sort of have more or less a focal point here of the two sort of islands that we've created trying to meet each other in the middle. We have just this big kind of triangle here, if you can see that, and then over here, I'm trying to create another triangle just to kind of piece the whole thing together. But of course, once we add plants, everything is gonna change. Everything is gonna look different. Um, but this is just kind of where we're at right now. Still need to super glue things down in place, probably do quite a bit of moving around of things. And we definitely need to have some more in the back here to help create the illusion of depth, but I think so far, it's looking pretty good. Don't you like your skate? It's the best skate I've ever seen. Oh, I'm my bestest buddy in the whole world. You're giving me too much credit, man. No, I am excited for it. It's gonna look really good once we get some plants in it. Yeah, yeah, hopefully Mark can finish up some one of these days. And uh, and we can do that, but all the pieces I think are, are held down. So I think, I think we're gonna be good. We'll, we'll cross our fingers though. Alright guys, it's finally time to plant the tank. Here we have a tub with all of our plants in it. There's a lot. Okay, so we're gonna do a speeded up version of planting the tank because it's gonna take forever and there's no point in going through every single thing, but I'll overlay some text on there for what plants we decided to use. And yeah, let's go ahead and let's start doing it, finally.
Rob, what do you think? Are these pieces of wood gonna hold still? Oh, absolutely, dude. You think? Yeah. I mean, I, we're I, almost I, halfway I have, there. I have absolute faith in you. I don't know if I go that far, but. <laughs> My you, man, dude. I knew you could pull it off. Dude, it's like unveiling it, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. The black curtain. Oh! Dang. That is pretty sweet. What do you think, man? Well, I gotta get rid of this. I gotta move the lights, and now I'm gonna like enjoy it. Got a little bit of a leak. Uh, not good, but if anybody can fix it, it's Marcus. And remember, I'm not the one who put that piece in. Everything else is perfect. It's a day later, guys. Don't worry, we got the issue with the tank leaking fixed. It was just a bulkhead thing. I uh, did a little bit of replumbing. It's done. The tank is done. Let's check it out. This tank is huge. My biggest escape yet. Super, super thankful to be able to do it. Rob was just, he just came in in the clutch. He had all the right materials for me and I think it, everything turned out pretty good. He seemed to really like it. All the guys seemed to be into it. So that's that was the goal and I, I think I accomplished that. So that makes me really, really happy. So in the end, I decided to go with the three island look here with the main one in the center and then kind of two accessory ones on each side. The one on the right's a little bit smaller in comparison and this middle one is a little off of center. That's what I wanted to create. There's a ton of room still in the back though. Okay, so maybe if I could go and do this scape again, maybe I would push at least one of these islands more to the back, but I think it still turned out okay. Um, to fill in this back space, we have the uh, the red Reuben swords back there and the goal for those is just to get them to grow really, really big. So when we come down here and look, this is actually where Rob is gonna sit and look at the tank from right here. Hopefully over the next few months, these swords are really gonna take and grow and just get really tall up to the top of the water and really fill things in back there. So when we look from here, we'll definitely see a lot of them. They're behind each one of the islands. You can see there's a few back there as well as on the right side. Um, but then when you come back, the idea is, is that we look back here and we'll see those big sword leaves in the back and it'll help add to the depth that this tank has. Um, so that was an important piece that we've added. Another thing was, of course, the crypts, they're all starting to melt. And when they come back, their leaves will be shaped a little bit differently, but they'll be all, you know, have that converted growth and just fill out the foreground of this tank. Now the guys are gonna have to do quite a bit of maintenance on this aquarium to keep it you know where they want it i think they want to still have a lot of open substrate here to be able to see the livestock that they put in here they don't want just crypts to be everywhere so they're gonna have to do some work but beyond that i mean the majority of the islands are filled in with java fern a few different types um, there's also some crypt spiralis in here. So the idea is, is that as the islands grow, you know, the java fern will extend up. You'll see the tips of the swords in the back and on the sides, and then you'll have this crypt spiralis kind of long and flowing with the pumps out of the wood. I, th I think that could look pretty cool in the end. I also placed a bunch of dwarf lilies around here. I put one in the front here just for fun. And I think there's another one in the front here, but most of them are just in the back of the aquarium. Let's see if we can see some here. We got a good shot. So there's a bunch back there. And the idea there is that we're gonna get to the point where those lily pads are up at the top of the water and we'll just see all these lily stems 
in the back. That could add another cool dimension to the tank. I mean, we'll just have to just wait and see what happens with that if it actually does look good. Really, the only other thing we have to wait for in this tank and be patient on is the moss. So you can see where I went a little heavy with the super glue, all the white patches on there. That doesn't look particularly good right now, but give it a month. Once that moss starts to grow, we won't see any of that. And I think the scape is really, really just gonna come together and hopefully the guys still like it. And yes, we got super lucky. The super glue held the wood to the rocks. Like I said, it's been a little over 24 hours a day since we filled the tank up and nothing has shifted or popped up out of place. So super glue for the win. Unfortunately, the water is still pretty cloudy, so we're not really getting the best view of the tank. We just have a couple of filter pads in the sump to filter out some of that over the night. Um, but we're still, you know, looking through the entire length of the tank here. You can see there's a long way to go. Once they get the filter set up, that should clear up pretty soon. Unfortunately, I won't be here to get that footage. Um, but even so, I think the tank is, is still pretty good. They're gonna have to mess around with adjusting the outputs here because, I mean, it's easy to point it a little bit in the wrong direction and just have a ton of plants blow around. We were messing with that earlier, making sure that the swords in the back were staying in, in place and whatnot, but you know, they got a little bit more work to do, but my job here is done. Don't forget to check out Rob's YouTube channel as well as his online store, Flip Aquatics, where you can get your hands on some awesome shrimp and other invertebrates, food, I mean, you name it, just go check it out. I also have some coupon codes that I'll have down in the description. Thank you once again to Rob and the Flip Aquatics team for being a partner of the channel and letting me have this awesome opportunity to escape this huge tank. Thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.